Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Danielle. My name's Justin Chen. I'm a lawyer here in the Atlanta metro area. And today we're going to talk all, all about mediation, talk about all about mediation. So we're here to answer the most frequently common asked questions about mediation. And but we're going to just jump uh, right into it. But here's Danielle. Good morning, Justin. Good morning. How are you today? Good, good, good. Thank you. Yeah, I love your tie. Thanks, thanks. Um, Justin knows that mediation is my favorite. Um, I just love the whole process of it, the negotiation, just trying to get our clients, um, you know, it's better to try to get everything settled before, you know, even having to get to a hearing. So in mediation, you have an opportunity to have some control over the outcome. Um, once you leave mediation and it goes to court, you know, everything's in the judge's hands. So that's why I really fight hard and work hard for our clients when it comes to mediation. And Justin, I realized too, that most of our clients, I didn't realize how nervous they were about mediation, which I understand because I was very nervous about my own. So it made me just realize how many of them don't understand the process and there's really nothing to be scared of. It's very casual. So we just wanted to bring a little information um, to maybe kind of ease some of those sleepless nights. You know, if I knew that they were so worried for so long, I would have told them a long time ago about mediation and not to worry. So um, I just, I hope we can cover everything or any questions that our clients have in this video. Um, Justin, can you tell our clients um, just exactly what mediation is, please? So mediation is also called alternative dispute resolution. And it's the process where both parties, well, it's actually the event. It's the event where both parties appear uh, along with their attorneys and uh, each party sits in a, a separate room. Uh, Pre-pandemic, of course, uh, it was all done um, non-virtually. Uh, now uh, with, with Zoom technology, uh, it is customarily uh, done over Zoom. Um, we probably will see more in-person mediations here soon, uh, just because I think the in-person mediation event is better. But um, you know, you won't, you won't. Uh, yes, as Daniel mentioned, a lot of our clients are nervous, just have uh, mixed feelings before going to mediation, and that's why we want to make this video. So, so you won't be seeing your ex's face or your soon-to-be ex's face in mediation. Uh, it'll be you, me, and Danielle uh, sitting in a Zoom room together, and the mediator will go back and forth between the Zoom conference rooms. So um, mediation is required uh, in some courts or in some jurisdictions to even go to a temporary hearing. So um, every case needs to be mediated, though, before going to a final hearing, no matter the jurisdiction. So it's a process that's uh, called alternative dispute resolution, but it's it's the opportunity to really hash out uh, a, even a partial settlement agreement. So even though we may not be able to settle all the terms, all the issues of the divorce, uh, which we call a global settlement, uh, oftentimes we are able to resolve, for example, a parenting plan. And, and that's one of my trade secrets is I'm able to lock down custody for as I, I generally always represent the custodial parent, but I'm able to lock down te uh, a temporary parenting plan that locks in uh, custody for my client. And of course, I know the, 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 what I'd have to do to trade off to get that. Uh, the trade-offs may be uh, no child support for several months, but everyone's going to want to trade a few months of child support uh, for uh, waiving a custody, a custody battle. So uh, mediation, we can, it's called narrow the scope, we can limit the issues. And then also when we go to court, in the event we are not able to resolve all the issues of the case, the judge uh, you're going to look more favorable to the judge. The judge is going to be like, hey, well, these parties went to mediation. They were able to work out custody. They were able to work out a parenting plan. Mm -hmm. They were able to work out these temporary issues of who's going to have sole and exclusive possession of the home on a temporary basis. So the judge is going to look more favorable and probably give you more playing time because it says the parties and the attorneys can work together. The last thing that 
a judge wants is two attorneys barking back and forth and not talk, that, that didn't talk and make a good faith effort to mediate. So uh, that's kind of a long answer to a short question, but mediation, it's an alternative, it's called alternative dispute resolution. And if you can work it out in mediation or even a partial um, settlement, it could save you a lot of money and court costs, court fees, attorney fees. Um, you know, it's just, it's a definitely a better financial way to go about it. If you think you can come to some kind of resolution um, instead of going to court. So Justin, how, to, how do our clients take the step to get to mediation? So mediation is, it, it, it is still a formal process. It's a, so there are very few pre-divorce filing mediations. I would say 1% of my cases have that. Uh, and that would be more classed into an uncontested divorce. But for a contested divorce, which means there needs to be formal court intervention or alternative dispute resolution uh, intervention, uh, the first step is to file a divorce. Once you file the divorce, the uh, you'll receive a mediation order probably after uh, request of your attorney and the other party will be required to mediate within 60 days of the order. That's usually the standard. So as uh, you imagine, you, you're probably calling our office or other attorney's office because you can't get the other party to mediate. You can't even get the other party to talk to you about the terms of the divorce. Well, right. that's why, yeah, that's why uh, Elon Musk says um, attorneys get, uh, or, or or the the professional gets paid in proportion to the um, problem he's uh, uh, able to solve. So uh, we are able to step in, just being an officer of the court, to file that divorce for you and to propose a uh, order to mediate. Um, obviously, we see a lot uh, a lot of those times those orders to mediate are not taken. Seriously, but that that is the first step to position your case to get your soon to be ex to the table to negotiate. Um, what we also do too is we have certain mediators that we have long term business relationships that we offer to opposing party or opposing counsel to mediate. And this is a lot better for you because uh, we've worked with these mediators and these mediators that I prefer to work with know me and know that I offer uh, a fair offer to your ex to get this done. Um, it may be an offer that's uh, slightly better in your interest, but it, it is something that the court would probably give to you uh, on, on a very high likelihood. So these mediators know me and they're also going to work hard because mediators have to sell the deal to the other party for us. Mm -hmm. So uh, my first step is I will reach out to opposing party, opposing counsel, and offer to use these mediators. I'll tell you about 50% of the time, maybe a little bit less to be honest, 40% of the time, because this, this would take opposing counsel or opposing party to agree to my mediator and they may feel uh, that's biased and or the mediator will be biased towards us. But that mediator was gonna work a lot harder when we, in the event we are not able to agree on a mediator, and I will never agree to opposing counsel's mediator. So uh, the, uh, the alternative- Don't give away our secrets. <laughs> uh, the alternative dispute resolution office will assign us a mediator. Every county has a, a, an ADR office and they work very hard to get parties to start talking and assign us a mediator. And I don't like mediating with someone I haven't worked with, but I will try as, as hard as I can to work with that mediator in the event we're assigned to a mediator. And uh, that's the first, first thing you, you need to do though, is file that divorce, uh, ask your attorney, ask our office to uh, get an order to mediate issued. Thank you, Justin. I love the mediators we work with. Um, just in case anything was misunderstood, you know, the mediators, they really are impartial, even if they're ones that we typically use um, they are. And anything that's said in the room with the mediator or on Zoom will not go back to the other party unless you give the go ahead. And we often, sometimes people don't want to discuss all the details in front of the mediator. So the mediator will step out of the room or out of the Zoom breakout room so that you can discuss with the client um, the legal 
options that they have based on what the mediator came back to say. So I just want everyone to know that it's, it is private and um, nothing goes back to the other side, opposing counsel or opposing party that you do not allow to be said. So um, Justin, you touched on um, mediation formats. Can you just give us a little more of a detailed ex um, explanation of what the formats mean on Zoom and in person, kind of um, the setup, please? Yeah, thank you so much, Danielle, for talking about confidentiality, but that's the cardinal rule of uh, lawyering is confidentiality. So everything you tell our team is uh, locked in, in in a secret uh, safe. So, uh, and this is the same thing. When we go to mediation, we sign mediation guidelines and confidentiality agreements that the mediator cannot be subpoenaed by the court. That's the first thing that they're going to say. Uh, and, and settlement offers are inadmissible in a court of law, uh, except for attorney's fees purposes. So, so anything uh, that's discussed it uh, will be held confidential unless you release that to the mediator to tell the other party. So the, the, the format though is, uh, let's just talk about uh, that we're filming this during the pandemic, but as we're coming out of the pandemic now, I expect, like I mentioned, that mediations will be in person. Generally, we'll be at one of the attorney's offices. Uh, we'll have a conference room and opposing party, opposing counsel will have a conference room separate. Mediator will go back and forth between the rooms to, uh, to, to bring settlement offers back and forth. And once a settlement offer is uh, issued verbally, it can't be retracted. Uh, you know, that's just kind of the playbook for mediation. So it's important to um, write down uh, your bottom line because once you get into mediation, there's gonna be a lot of pressure I mean, people just feel pressure. I mean, that's that's their one chance, their one day. Uh, so you need to decide, and I'm kind of going on tangent, but you need to decide the bottom line uh, before you walk into the room. And that's one of my guarantees to you as, as your lawyer is uh, you and I are going to have an informal email agreement about what your bottom line is. And I won't twist your arm behind your back to make you settle uh, something that's not as good as your bottom line. So. Uh, you need to work on that. Uh, the format, going back to the question, is uh, is is very casual. Uh, you don't need to dress up in a in a suit. Now, with court, we'll give you another uh, video, maybe on how to dress and present yourself in court. But you can come your most comfortable clothes and and just it's it's just very casual. So and and you're not going to feel any pressure. Um, like I said, I'm not one of those attorneys that's going to strong arm you, put you on pressure to settle because then I just have an unhappy client. So generally, I can I, I can tell uh, within half an hour, uh, uh, 45 minutes if the case is close to settlement, and then we'll work hard to to get it settled. But after 45 minutes or an hour, I can generally smell if it's not going to settle on the terms that would be most beneficial to you, and we'll just end the mediation. Uh, the same formats over Zoom, you'll need to pay the mediator. It's customary to pay the mediator via, via credit card um, at the end of the session. So you need to be ready to uh, you, you know, uh, pay the mediator at the end. Uh, mediators are not paid up front like attorneys and attorneys cannot use the retainer uh, that they're given to pay the mediation fees. Uh, in the event the mediator is not paid, they always have the, the legal remedy to motion the court to pay uh, to get their mediation fees paid, which uh, would make our case not look as good as I'd like it to look. So that's kind of the format of mediation. Thank you, Justin. Usually, um, yes, Justin was saying they collect at the end of mediation, just depending on how long it runs. Um, usually our quickest mediations, the one that settle fast, are like a minimum of three hours because there's paperwork. I mean, Justin really likes to have the paperwork like signed, sealed, delivered by the end. Otherwise it never gets mm -hmm. done. So, right. um, but just a quick note to add that generally both parties split the mediation and depending on the mediator, the hourly price can range anywhere from 150 an hour up to $300 an hour. The ones that we choose to use tend to be around the $200 an hour range. Um, so, you will be required to pay half and opposing party will be required to pay half. And again, and this is something I didn't know. Again, I just want to 
um, remind you of what Justin said, that it cannot come out of your retainer or anything that you've paid to the firm. So that's an extra expense. Um, and I love that mediation because again, it's like your show. I mean, you get to call the shots. You either can work towards an agreement or you can say, you know what? I don't like where this is going. Let's cut it. I'd rather take my chances in court. So it really gives you the control. We're sitting there for you you know, not the other way around in a hearing where, you know, the judge is in control. So just um, keep that in mind. So thank you, Justin. Um, Justin, the last question, I think you touched on partial settlement so we can move on from that, but um, preparing for mediation, what do the clients need to do prior to mediation? I know we talk in a lot of our other videos about DARPAs and discovery and all of that. What um, is the timeline of what do our clients need to bring to the table for mediation day? So, yeah, that's a loaded question. Thank you so much. Uh, and that's going to depend on the positioning of the case. So uh, generally, I would say in 75% of cases, opposing counsel is going to require formal discovery to be exchanged before setting up mediation. Um, my, my law firm's rules, I, I, I don't do that because I think any chance to talk and get this uh, mediation requirement out of the way is going to push the case faster. So I will actually do a, a request to mediate letter once I sign on a client and they have opposing counsel. I'll send opposing counsel all my dates. I am available for the next two or three months and really push to get the parties to the table to talk about settlement. So, but in the event that opposing counsel is uh, one of those 75% of law firms that requires discovery, you're gonna have to go through discovery first. So yeah, watch our discovery video and our DARFA video so that you can uh, work on that. This should be the third video you should be watching uh, if you're a client of my firm, but uh, yeah, you're gonna have to really focus on getting that DARFA. Um, the reason for this is when we're putting together child support, uh, there's all different ways to litigate child support based on ability to earn or earnings over the last three years averaged or year to date earnings divided by number of months or last year's uh, adjusted gross income on the tax return. So in the event of opposing counsel is requiring all documents, those are necessary to come to the table. Uh, because uh, they're going to want to know what they're exactly looking at. Um, I'll say a lot of times if this is what we call kind of a vanilla custodial case where both parties, uh, you know, either their income, they have one income from a W-2, um, I'm really going to talk with opposing counsel and say, hey, look, I mean, we don't really have a material dispute over the imp imputation of income. So, so I, I really hope that uh, we're able to get one of our mediators on board. Um, I'm I'm usually able to settle. Also, I like to uh, go back and forth and provide opposing counsel with a settlement offer just so they uh, just so they know kind of where we're kind of at and maybe have a counter offer back from them. So what you can do in preparing for mediation is help us by uh, creating that bottom line and then uh, we can draft a, a and Ashley is very good at drafting too. If, I, if you can't uh, reach me, definitely email Danielle and uh, draft a, you know, just even, it doesn't have to be a full-blown settlement agreement. We uh, try to save the client's money by just drafting a settlement offer letter, which has the broad stroke terms of right. your settlement offer. And then just sending that one, it's, it's literally a one page executive summary. Okay, here are the, the terms uh, of, you know, who would have custody, who's gonna have decision-making authority, uh, who's gonna have the house, uh, who's gonna have the car, uh, just those those uh, uh, bottom line terms, and 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 if they reply, uh, that will uh, you know tell us kind of a little bit where they're at, and then usually I send those settlement offers, and and every me mediator is going to have your uh, you know your pleadings, uh, your petition for divorce, or petition, uh, or answer and counterclaim, or petition for modification, so they'll be familiar kind of where it's at. Um, but I would say that uh, that's the best way to prepare. It's just just get out all the documentation that we're asking for, uh, like the DARFA, like the intake form, like the questionnaire, um, like your discovery, like your pay stubs, um, all in. And then that that way we can uh, really fast track you to get 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 the mediation uh, sooner than later. Thank you, Justin. Yes, it's important to have all those documents accessible because you know, it just wastes time and money during the mediation to have to pause and track those down and 
email them to the appropriate people. So if you could just have those ready. And Justin did touch something I call the wish list. Um, something I encourage our clients to bring to mediation. It's their own private list. You know, it's just a list of things that are their they're not leaving mediation without like their hard lines of I have to have this and I'm not negotiating things that you're you would be willing to negotiate on and then basically your bottom line so you know just keep in mind that how the other party has to negotiate or has to um kind of meet in the middle so do you so you have to have some things you're willing to concede on. Um, really the point of mediation is to come to an agreement that you can walk away from mediation feeling good enough about, you know, without feeling like you left everything on the table, just, you know, feeling like, okay, this is solid enough and now I don't have to go to court. So if you can do that, you've accomplished everything. Um, and I think that's it for mediation, Justin, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Danielle. Yeah, I just want to touch on that is uh, we will advise you uh, because clients want to know, okay, with with the the facts of my case, what's the probabilities that the court's going to grant me this? Where is the court going to probably land? And so we'll give yeah. you pretty much, I mean, most of our clients really let us kind of decide <laughs> where it's nice, where, where your case should be, uh, what offers to propose to get to where you want to be. So don't worry a lot about that, about what uh, Danielle um, mentioned in terms of deciding where you want to be, because we will come up with a strategic plan and give you your legal options um, of where you want to be and the risks associated with going to court and how much you could benefit uh, by going to court. So, but right. anyways, that was a, those were very good comments though by Danielle and we appreciate her input. Uh, in the mediation process and participating with our clients uh, alongside me. So we look forward to working with you. Uh, give us a call if you've got any questions about mediation and hopefully this is helpful to you. Thanks. Thank you, bye.